Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. An engine is running at 5,000 RPMs. Let me go ahead and just clarify this right here, just in case uh, uh, somebody out there don't know what an RPM is. Okay, so RPMs is an acronym. It stands uh, for revolutions per minute. Okay, so for example, if you have an engine, the engine is spinning. We're not going to get overly technical here, but the engine is spinning at uh, a particular amount of revolutions per minute. So in this example, the engine is currently running at 5,000 revolutions per minute. That's what RPMs stand for. Okay, so an engine is running at 5,000 RPMs. If the RPMs of this engine are slowed 40%, how many RPMs will be made in 30 seconds? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course we'll walk through the solution to this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning mathematics, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so just one more time, so we're super clear about the... A question here, so an engine, right? So an engine is turning, and the uh, basically the way we measure how fast the engine is turning, a turn is what we call a revolution, is called RPM. So an engine is running at 5,000 RPMs. Now let's suppose your foot is on the accelerator, then you're gonna kind of back off, maybe it's going a little bit too fast, and now um, it's, you're going to slow that engine down 40%. So if the RPMs are slowed 40%, from the 5,000 RPMs, how many RPMs, or revolutions rather, okay, so this, we want to kind of understand this, is how many revolutions will be made in 30 seconds after we slow the engine down 40%. Okay, so I really uh, want all of you out there to have a full chance to solve this problem and not be confused by any kind of technical aspects of the problem. Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is 1,500. So that engine is going to make 1,500 revolutions in 30 seconds, or it'll be going at 1,500 RPMs, uh, which is, in fact, uh, 3,000 RPMs. But again, we are uh, talking about how many revolutions were made in 30 seconds. Okay, so hopefully no one's confused, and hopefully all of you out there got the right answer. And if you did get the right answer, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A+, plus, a 100%, and multiple stars, so you can tell your friends and family that indeed you are a professional certified expert in solving basic math word problems that involve percent. Because obviously we need to know a thing or two about percent to solve this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. And don't feel bad if you didn't get this right. This is pretty easy stuff. And uh, first things first, uh, first, here is the problem. Now, I've already kind of read the problem and uh, hopefully clarified the problem just in case any of you were confused. But let's suppose uh, you were uh, or are a math student and you see this problem on a test or an exam or homework problem or whatever the case is. If you don't understand uh, something, even after you've read it a few times, raise your hand, you know, ask for clarification. You can't solve a problem that you don't understand. But uh, let's go ahead and just talk about a general rule that I love to kind of teach, and that is the rule of three. So the rule of three is read a problem at least three times before you start doing anything. Just make sure you thoroughly understand the problem. You can get in all kinds of trouble if you like read a problem once. You're like, okay, I get what's going on. And then you just kind of run off in a certain direction. And you'll be like, you know what? Uh, that strategy is not too good. Let me go back and read the problem again, maybe a few more times. Oh, this is a better way to solve this problem. You go in this direction. Uh, you don't want to do that. Uh, that's a frustrating approach to do a problem. And it's time consuming. So to avoid all that, always get in the habit of really taking your time, reading the problem, understand the question, visualize it, and then kind of think about, all right, what can I do here? Well, um, the best way to solve any math word problem is to try to model it, okay? And if you can visualize it, 
uh, even better. Okay, now of course, uh, this is where your creativity can come into play. But remember, uh, when you are doing a problem, okay, whatever you write down on your piece of paper, uh, just think, hey, who could possibly be reading my work? Does it make sense? In other words, does your logic, uh, your explanation, or your approach to the problem, uh, you know, do you understand it? Well, if you understand it, that's great, but you want to, you know, make sure that someone else could understand it. That's a good litmus test or a good kind of um, way to kind of a standard, i.e. to follow that, yes, indeed, you are being clear about how you're going to solve the problem. So again, what you want to do is model the situation. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on. So we have uh, this engine. Now there is an instrument uh, called a tachometer. Uh, some of you, I'm pretty sure, are familiar with it. I'm pretty sure some of you out there are experts in engines. I bet you some of you even can uh, rebuild engines. Now, of course, I'm old enough to remember uh, tachometers. Uh, they were pretty common in vehicles. And basically, they measure the RPMs. Now, a lot of uh, vehicles still have uh, tachometers on them, but they're just part of your dashboard. Uh, but anyways, you need to uh, pay attention to your RPMs for those of you out there like, hey, why is this even important, Mr. UT Math Man? Well, if you spin your, if you kind of put your foot on the gas and you run your engine too hard, you're going to, you know, uh, surpass uh, what is kind of the... Uh, in the safe RPM level for your vehicle. In other words, uh, this, they call that redlining, where you can just, hey, you're just going to run the engine too fast, and then bad things are going to happen. Okay, so anyways, uh, there's this instrument called a tachometer, and this is not even necessary to understand this, but that's just a little bonus piece of information, just in case you want to look in your information and see what kind of RPMs your vehicle runs at. Okay, so right now we have this engine running at 5,000 RPM. So let's imagine it's a little instrument and uh, the needle is pointing at 5,000. Of course, that would be RPMs. Revolution per minute. Okay, so in other words, the engine is spinning. Okay, we're not going to get all technical here. Uh, the crankshaft, etc., is spinning uh, 5,000 revolutions in one minute. Okay, so we need to be able to interpret that. Okay, so now what we're going to do here is that we're going to slow this engine down 40%, right? So let's go back to the problem. So an engine is running at 5,000 RPMs. If the RPMs are slowed 40%, now how do we slow the RPMs? Well, just take your foot off the gas and the engine is going to slow down. So we're going to slow uh, the RPMs down 40%. And now the question is what? Well, the uh, engine is going to be turning at a new speed. Okay, so there's going to be a new RPM at this, uh, you know, um, uh, speed, which is obviously slower than 5,000 RPMs. And at that point, uh, whatever the RPMs in, we want whatever the RPMs um, at this scenario, when once we slow down 40%, we want to uh, answer what question? Well, the question is, after... Um, if the RPMs are slow at 40%, how, okay, we have to really hone in here, understand the question, how many RPMs will be made in 30 seconds or revolutions, okay? Because that's revolutions per minute, but of course we're under a minute. So how many revolutions will be made in 30 seconds? Okay, so again, not to be redundant, we just want to really be clear and visualize you know, the mechanics of the problem. Okay, so we're at 5,000 RPMs. We're going to slow down. For, we're going to slow down 40%, and then we're going to figure out how many RPMs uh, or how many revolutions the engine will be turning in 30 seconds. All right, so that is the kind of the model. Now, this is my model. You could have another um, kind of way to look at this. It's perfectly fine as long as you understand it, and as long as someone else, like your teacher, uh, could understand your work. That's what counts. Okay, so. How can we, uh, you know, further interpret this problem? Well, if the engine is at 5,000 RPMs and we slow down 40%, well, what we're doing is we're really maintaining 60% of the current RPMs, right? So we're going to maintain 60%. In other words, we slow down 40%. We're still, we're going to be running at 60% of the 5,000. So there's a couple different ways we can approach this problem, right? So we're going to slow down 40% of what? Well, 40% of 5,000. We need to figure out uh, what the new speed is. So we can do this one or two ways. We can figure out what 40% of 5,000 is and then subtract that away from 5,000 to get this current speed. 
Or we can just say, you know what, if the engine's going to slow 40%, it's just maintaining 60% of its current speed. It's just another way to kind of say uh, whether the engine's going to slow down 40%, it's just going to be running at 60%. It means the same thing. So it's just less math uh, to... Um, figure out this current speed by just finding out what 60% of 5,000 is. Now, you could have figured out what 40% of 5,000 is and then uh, subtract that away. That's perfectly fine. I'm definitely not trying to make you feel bad. But again, you know, in a math problem, you always want to work as efficiently as possible. As possible, uh, you know, and again, we are dealing with percent or percent math word problems. Okay, so uh, we need to figure out what 60% of 5,000 is equal to. Okay, so then this is just a basic percent question. 60% of 5,000 is equal to what? Again, feel free to use a calculator, but uh, this is the first kind of um, question we need to answer before we can answer the actual uh, question in the problem. All right, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I am posting this video on uh, the 2nd of January, 1 to 24. So uh, we are in a new year. Happy New Year uh, to you. I hope you all had a great 2023. And now we are into 2024. Now, um, in 2023, I posted somewhere around like three, 730 uh, YouTube videos. 730 YouTube videos. My videos run from anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes from basic math to advanced math. Now, why would I do all that content? Well, it's because I love teaching mathematics. There is such a need uh, for people to improve in math. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the reports that keep coming out, and it, there was a, a latest report um, that came out at the end of 2023 on global math proficiency, broken down per uh, country, and all countries more or less are not doing <laughs> good in mathematics. Right? In other words, uh, the, the trend is downward, and that's not good. So I really feel compelled to do more in 2024. So my goal is to post, I'm going to try to go for a thousand plus YouTube videos and spread it out between basic math, advanced math, algebra, geometry, trigonometry, calculus, etc., etc., uh, because a lot of you out there are learning a variety of uh, different levels of mathematics. Now, that's my goal. You need to have a goal as well, especially when it comes to mathematics. Just you don't want to wink it. Okay. You want to set a target. If you want to improve, if you want to pass a certain exam, if you want to reach a certain level, you got to set a goal. You got to write the steps down. And I could just tell you basically, uh, in general terms, the steps are you got to work hard and you need to find a great math teacher and a great math course, you know, clear, comprehensive math instruction. So if you need full on course instruction, and you like my teaching style, check out my full math courses. You'll find links to them in the description of this video. And also subscribe to my channel, really helps support my work. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. So again, Happy New Year to you. And if you are a subscriber, thank you so much. And uh, let's go back and finish this problem up. It's hopefully uh, pretty easy for most of you. But uh, if you forgot how to find the percent of a number, well, what we need to do is change this percent into a decimal. Okay, so how do we change 60% into a decimal? Well, what we need to do is simply divide this percent by 100. Okay, so when you want to change a percent into a decimal, you divide by 100, which is the same thing as moving the decimal point over two places to the left. So 60% or 60.0%, uh, you just move the decimal point over two places to the left, but that is the uh, result of dividing by 100. So, you know, all of you are like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, just move the decimal point. Yes, I understand that. But why? Well, that's the result of dividing by 100. Okay. So when we want to go from percent to a decimal, we divide by 100. When we have a decimal, we want to go back to percent, we multiply by 100. We do the reverse of that. Okay. So 60% is 0. 0.6. And we need to write that percent as a uh, decimal, so 60% again is 0.6, and then just simply multiply by the number. So 0 0.6 times 5,000 is 3,000. 0.6 times 5,000, 3,000. Pretty simple math. Again, feel free to use a calculator. So what did we just do? Well, let's go back to kind of visualizing our problem. So here, our engine was at 5,000 RPMs. We slowed down 40% uh, 
uh, or maintain 60% of the speed, 60% of 5,000, which is 3,000 RPMs. Okay, so now the engine is turning 3,000 revolutions per minute. Okay, so that is the um, really, uh, for the most part, the information that we need to know in order to answer the question. So let's revisit the question. An engine running at 5,000 RPMs, if the RPMs are slowed 40%, i.e., uh, now this engine is running at 3,000 RPMs, how many RPMs or revolutions, namely, okay, will be made in 30 seconds? All right, so an engine that is running at 3,000 RPMs or revolutions per minute, okay, we could state that as revolutions per 60 seconds, right? So it's turning 3,000 revolutions per every 60 seconds or well, per one minute. So pretty straightforward math here. How many revolutions will it make in 30 seconds? Well, it's going to be half of this uh, 3,000. So 3,000 divided by 2 is... Uh, 1500 revolutions in 30 seconds. Okay. All right. So that is how we solve this problem. And uh, of course, some of you may have learned a, a thing or two about vehicles. And uh, here's the thing, right? When it comes to solving math word problems, uh, and if you want to get better at math word problems, of course, if you are a math student or if you're interested in math, the whole idea behind learning math is to solve problems. Okay. Just don't solve a bunch of equations and not do anything. You know, math is a tool. It's designed to solve a wide variety of problems. So the application of mathematics is to, again, solve things like word problems. And word problems are, are just basically real-world scenarios where you know, we can use um, math to solve or answer a question. So if you want to get better at word problems, you have to get strong at the underlying skills, Okay, whether it's percent or equations or whatever the case is. Make sure you understand the skills first and then apply those skills to solve. And word problems span the, you know, the whole kind of a library of things that you're going to be learning in mathematics equations more advanced equations when there's just not one type of math or problem but anyways hopefully you enjoy this little problem if that's the case don't forget to like and subscribe and with that being said i definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures thank you for your time and have a great day